We learned today of the death last week of Cy Wexler, who was a different kind of filmmaker. He made movies with names like Wonders in Your Own Backyard or Human Heredity. Fathers produce two types of sperm cells. One type has a long X chromosome. The other type has a short Y chromosome. Or Clinical Applications of Microporous Tape. That last title may have been seen only by medical students, but Cy Wexler projects like The Great Rights, an animated 1963 short, were instructional cinema seen in classrooms all over the country. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By the way, the voice of Millie in The Great Rights was, as you might have guessed, June Foray, better known as the voice of Rocky the Flying Squirrel. Bill Scott, who was the voice of Bullwinkle, was also in that one. Cy Wexler was 88 when he died and left behind a lifetime of work that was all about movies and education. Joining us from Los Angeles is his son, Howard Wexler. And, uh, Howard, perhaps you can begin by telling us about how your father got involved in movie making during the Second World War. My dad enlisted into the Army and became part of the Signal Corps, which made instructional films for the Corps of Engineers. So when the Army had to build a bridge across the river, the Signal Corps would make an instructional film about that building of a bridge. And my father was a cameraman in that unit. Did he believe in the power of film to teach? Oh, he certainly did. He was a master teacher because he could take a difficult subject and make it simple and visual so people of all ages then could understand a complex subject. Doctors would come to him, propose a subject that was extremely difficult even on paper, and Sai would somehow figure a way to make it interesting, educational, entertaining, and informative. He received awards for every single film. He, I think he liked the simple ones, something like Squeak the Squirrel. Squeak the Squirrel. What happened in Squeak the Squirrel? Squeak the Squirrel was a very, very early film, probably about 1952, about a squirrel learning Look, ways to teach himself how to get food. In other words, uh, a peanut was dangling from a string. And the squirrel couldn't quite See reach the peanut, so he had to push a little block over, over so he could stand he on the block and reach the food. That film wants. is my favorite because that squirrel lived in our house for woods, a, a while in a cage, but it was just uh, a wild squirrel well, that was we'll tamed, and the, the squirrel learned by himself how to climb this little block and push the block over to reach the food. So. In a sense, it's kind of a metaphor for uh, kids mm -hmm. and adults that you can overcome any place. obstacle. You can learn things if you have to. One of the popular titles was something called Human Heredity, mm -hmm. and that went through four editions. In other words, every four or five years, they would remake it to change hairstyles and wardrobe. But it was really one of the first sex education films to be popular in the classroom because it treated the subject in a very tame way and kids learn how conception takes place. And this is in the, the 50s when you couldn't really say that word. Your father's uh, movies were probably seen by uh, millions and millions and millions of, uh, of Americans, uh, most of them in school, I guess. But did he ever yearn for making the next Gone with the Wind instead? My father was really happy making educational films. He really liked to share his love of science and the world with, with other people, and in particular, uh, secondary grades. I don't think he would have been happy uh, with 40-foot uh, trucks and uh, a big crew. Well, thank you very much for talking with us about your Quite father. Quite welcome. Howard Wexler spoke to us from Los Angeles about his father, Cy Wexler, the maker of so many educational films, who died last week at the age of 88. You're listening to All Things Considered from NPR News.